Have you ever imagined how to achieve a cake with a heart on it? On today's episode of Baker's World, we will show you how to achieve a celebration centerpiece. Our guest baker is a creative cake maker who has been able to cut a niche for herself in cake making and decoration. We'll be having a chat with her and it will be very interesting, so don't go anywhere. On this segment, our cake is already baked, but our baker, Ngozi, and our assistant, Uju, will show you how to make fondant icing and decorate a graduation cake with a heart on it. I'm pretty sure you will learn something new from our baker's creativity. So let's get started. To make our fondant icing, we'll need a clean bowl, like we have here, and uh, half a cup of water, which we have already measured out. So I'm going to pour it into the the bowl. Next, I'm going to need gelatin. We have to level it out flat. Then we sprinkle it into the, the water. Then it goes into the pot that is already on fire. The pot has some water in it. So we need to bring this to a boil. But before it does that, we're going to have to add the glucose. We have a half cup of glucose here. So it goes into the same bowl where you have the, the gelatin and water. So while we wait for that to happen, we already have measured our uh, uh, icing sugar. So we have, what we have here is 1.5 kilograms of icing sugar. We need to sieve it in. We're saving now the icing sugar. There's one more thing I need to add, which is our, uh, our CMC, and combine everything together. Again, once you're convinced it's combined, then that's when we need to wait for our hot ingredient to come to a boil. I could check that now. Yes. So it's completely loosened up right now. Let me show it to you. It's, it's just like water. So I'm just putting it in the middle here. Now, so you have the icing sugar to combine. All right, so we need to transfer it to the table now and knead properly to combine. So you keep kneading it till it's combined very well and then you can see it's, it's a complete piece now. As we can see, it's a beautiful looking, you see? That's what your fondant should look like. Once you're done, you get a Ziploc bag or any airtight bag because you don't want to expose it. If you expose it, it gets dry. Put it in there until you're ready to use. We'll take a quick break here and leave our fondant to rest for a while. When we return, we'll be having a chat with our guest baker. Our guest today is Ngozi Azubike, born January 12th in Anambra State. Ngozi grew up in Delta State where she attended Federal Government College Wari, and from there, she proceeded to Inugu State University of Science and Technology. There, she bagged a degree in public administration. Upon the completion of her degree, Ngozi, like many others, was looking to get a white-collar job, and after a year of searching endlessly, Ngozi finally decided to delve into cake making, a business she started during her undergraduate days. As time passed, Ngozi started earning a good reputation and referrals from different clients. In pursuit of creativity and professionalism, Ngozi Azubike attended various training schools with top bakers, both in Nigeria and outside the country. Today, Ngozi has become a prominent baker, creating bespoke cakes that has been celebrated by peers at many shows and fairs. She has also impacted lives and careers of other bakers by training them in the art of cake making, sugar craft and decorations. Ngozi is married and blessed with three children. She is the CEO of Glitters Cakes and Decor. 
And of course, the woman we'll be talking about is right here with me on Baker's World. You're welcome on Baker's World. Thank you very much. Now, tell me, when did you first realize you wanted to venture into the baking business? That was about 10 years ago, if I'm correct. I, I nearly just moved to Abuja, and I really didn't have much to do. And I was looking out for that business or you know, thing that I can just lay my hands on that would work for me. But well, it wasn't easy, of course. So. <laughs> what were your expectations like when you started? I won't really say I had much expectations. Okay. At the time, it was just a mindset of make your cake for make the cake for the customer and deliver it to the customer. They are happy. I'm happy. That was really all I had at the time. But as time went on, my expectations grew, and people because people were now asking, "Oh, um, do you teach?" I would like to learn under you and all that. So I realized there's even more to this than just baking a cake. Tell me about your first rookie mistake. Huh. <laughs> that would be um, not busting the air bubble on the fondant. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize that was a thing, really, because I basically learned the hard way. I learned on the job. So I was delivering this cake to a client and I had gotten there, this was a very well finished cake and I had gotten to the point where the customer, in fact, she drove her car to me. So I got down, brought the, just opened my car, my trunk to bring out the cake and I saw a big balloon, like <laughs> scary, <laughs> you know? She, I, I didn't even, I was, I was scared, I didn't even know what to do because at that point the, the balloon had gotten so big and dry. So no matter what you do, it's gonna look really bad. So the client was just like, hey, don't worry, it's just a bad day after all, nothing, no big deal. Now I have learned that no air bubble is too small. So once I sight them, I bust them. When you have to design a cake for a client, you know, some Nigerian clients, they see something on the internet, they bring it to you that, oh, I see this cake somewhere, I see this yeah. cake somewhere, and I want this exact same type of... What is your creative thought process like? Experience has taught me to know what to do with any design that I come across. In fact, I would think they throw difficult designs at me purposely because they think I can do it. They've seen something similar and they think, oh, if she can do that one, she can do this one too. So when they throw something like that at me, it's more or less the experience. That's why even those who come under our tutorship, we always tell them, you can't possibly learn every single thing. But some things your mind will be open to with time because you already know how to do A, B will just come to you. Once I see a picture, I already can tell, oh, that was what was done there, this is what was done there, and. What is the most challenging cake that you've ever made as an experienced baker? That would be the human being. Okay. And the castle cake. Okay. Those are really, really challenging. Those are not the kind of cakes that you just do overnight or something, you know, you have to plan ahead and prepare. To you, who is an ideal customer? I don't think there's any such thing as an <laughs> ideal customer. Because they don't really know the work that you would put in. So when they come telling you, probably a cake that is supposed to be 100,000, they're telling you, oh, after describing this beautiful cake, they're telling you they have only 20,000 for it. You're expecting them to know, right? I mean, what you're bringing is, it can't be for this, but they, but they don't know. So there is no such thing as an ideal customer for you because an ideal one would be the one who understands what they're supposed to, what they're asking for and what you're going to be giving them. Well, thank you so much. It's really thank you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, that was our conversation with the CEO of Glitters Cakes and Decor, Ngozi Azubike. We'll take a quick break here, and when we return, we'll be covering the cake and doing further decorations. We're using a fondant mat. All we need to do is grease it with a little shortening, and then the smooth side of the fondant, we always lay it down. This is a 14 inch size uh, board. So normally when we are doing, we're working on a cake, if the cake is, um, let's say an eight inch round cake, it should be 
going on a 12 inch round board. That means I'm giving about four inches gap between the cake and the board. I can actually lift my fondant mat as well as the fondant. And then I lay it over and I peel out. Here we have some cornstarch for easy movement when I am smoothing it down I need to apply just a little bit here and then with my fondant smoothers I'm just going to smooth it out. You will need to have an exacto knife or a sharp knife or what they also call artist knife. Then you come to the edge you can see the board line even from the covering come to the edge right there and do a clean cut as best as possible. So the next thing to do is to bring our cakes together and trim. You can get them. So. so here we have already baked cakes. We have the strawberry cake, we have vanilla, and we have marble. We already also have um, buttercream here, which we're going to use as our glue to bring our cakes together. So now here, what we have here is called a stacking board. It's good to have a flat one because if your board is not flat, that's where your cake bending or tilting will begin from. So we'll just apply a bit of um, I would like to keep the pink one in between, so we'll take down this one. Right. And flip over. Good. If you think the cake has a bulge, you can as well take off a little bit of it, like the top of this place. Right. You can see our nice looking marble showing up. Then I'm going to try to trim the sides as well because you can't have it looking rough like this. If you if you leave it like that and you cover your your cake, it's going to the fondant wouldn't sit properly. It's going to look very very rough, and then you begin to see the lines of the joining, which we can't afford to see. So use a turntable to make the crumb coating easier. So I'll let her do the crumb coating. So crumb coating is basically covering the naked cake with some buttercream. Um, we're actually covering the crumbs. So you don't want to add too much buttercream, just as, as light as possible, enough to hold the fondant, but not too much, because if it's too much, when you put the fondant over, the fondant begins to dance. It won't really hold down. So that's your crumb coated cake. We're going to prepare now to roll out our fondant to cover this. So again, I lift and cover. So a little bit of corn flour to make my movement easy. Now you need to trap the edges of the cake. 
so that it doesn't stretch out too much and pull down. Uh, because if it stretches out too much, you get to see the body of the cake, which we don't really want to see. Now it's looking like a skirt. So you open and then bring it close and smoothen it. So it's my smoother. I'm going to nudge from the middle down just to cover up that bottom very well. Okay. I'll need another board. I'll place it on top of this one and then I'll do a quick flip over. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to fold this in. Now that we have flipped it, I'm going to go like from halfway down to push down some fondant, just a little bit. Don't apply too much energy to it so you don't bust your cake. You go to the corner of the cake right there, keeping it straight. You cut off all the excess. So all the rough fondant has been removed. We'll need to put this back on and do a quick flip again. So now we have a smooth top. I'm going to sit down again to do the same thing we did for the top, for the bottom, so that we not only have a straight top, but also have a straight bottom. All right. So I'm going to stand up again to flip. While we wait for this one to set, we're going to prepare to cover our heart cake. Okay. So for this one, just going to, since the fondant is not that big, you can actually still lift your fondant like this. Just going to lift it like this and cover. Okay. Okay, we're done for this one. With your sharp knife, you keep it down flat and then you take off this excess. So we're going to flip it back. Our next thing is to transfer the cake to the final board and then we'll continue our designing. But before I let go, I want to check that it's a bit centralized. So now we're going to put some double rods. These, um, these are going to serve as support for the cake that will sit on top of this one. Our royal icing again.
So again, I'll put it right there and then go all the way around. So I'm going to just share this into two. From this strip, I'm going to fold in and out like I'm taking this one in. This one goes out. And Just apply a little bit more of the sugar glue. As I'm cutting off, getting to the edge, I come down to make it really thin. So the thinner it is, the more real. So here we have the shredded part of it. I'm going to just roll it into each other. Knowing the angle that we want to see it coming down from, or grease. A little bit around there. Then we'll make a ball. So I'm making it a small dome out of it. I'll grease the middle part. need my steamer to come on. Once it steams the cake for us, then we'll be able to attach the stars that we've made. Now that it's steamed, it means that the body of the cake is a little wet, so it can take on anything I want to put right now. Graduation cake is all set. Ooh, my goodness, this is really beautiful. Very gorgeous and it's quite inviting. Yeah. Well done, good job. Well, as you've seen, achieving a graduation cake is quite tasking and engaging, but it is achievable if you can follow all the procedure displayed by our baker here. That's all we have for you today on Baker's World. You can expect a more exciting episode next week when we come your way. For your feedbacks, likes, and comments, you can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. It's Baker's World on NTA. You can also email us on our Gmail account. Until next week when we come your way, I am Funke Oyele. Bye.